everyone, welcome to our online worship experience. We are so glad you have joined us today. As we head into the countdown, say hello to somebody, tell us where you're joining from, and don't forget to hit that share button. After the countdown, we're going to have the word and we're going to a time of worship.
Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness. We thank you for your love. Thank you that you are God who is on the throne. This morning, as we take time to meditate upon your word, we ask you that you may move mountains in our lives. We ask you that your glory would descend upon our lives in a way that, O oh God, would experience you, O oh God, and be elevated to new levels. We ask you, Father, that this morning, 
you may teach us your word, that which we do not know, give it to us with full understanding. That which we do not have, give us access. By the revelation of this word, may we walk in power and authority in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. What an awesome time of worship. And uh, soon after this, we'll be getting back into uh, a time of worship. But I want to take a few minutes to just welcome all those that are joining us online. The E3 family, welcome this morning. I'm Pastor Lisulo, lead pastor of E3 Church, and we are based here in Columbia, Maryland. This morning, I just want to take a few minutes to bring the Word of God to us, and uh, we are catching part six in our series, Open Heaven, Open Heaven. Hallelujah. Our text this morning is Isaiah 64 and verse 1. Uh, Isaiah 64 and verse 1. The Bible says, O oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. This is the prayer that uh, the prophet Isaiah made to God. He said that God and asked God to come down, that he would tear open the heavens, not just open, but tear open the heavens that he would come down. So one of the questions that uh, has been uh, uh, coming up has been, what is open heaven? What is open heaven? And today I just want to give you a definition of open heaven uh, as the Lord has downloaded it to me. So open heaven is an acquired state of being that gives us access to God's presence, God's power, and God's provision. It's an acquired state of being. It's acquired. So we are not born with that. We acquire it. It's something that happens. You can have a season of open heaven. Uh, and um, it is, unfortunately, you can also have a season of closed heaven. God's will and desire is for us to experience open heaven at all times. So I want to us to go to a passage in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 to 34. This was Jesus speaking. He says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the beds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in burns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of them. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans ran away after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I like verse 32 and 33. It says, For the pagans run after all these things, your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Our heavenly Father knows what we need. And all these things will be added to us, will be given to us when we seek first the kingdom of God. So when we talk about open heaven, we are talking about God manifesting himself in, th at th in three dimensions, in his presence, his power, and his provision. 
Today I want us to focus on the supernatural provision under open heaven. Supernatural provision under open heaven. The passage that we read in Matthew simply tells us that God is concerned about us. God is concerned about us. And I want you to see four things this morning as we consider this subject, supernatural provision under open heaven. Number one is that God wants to provide for us. God wants to provide for us. It's his will, it's his desire that we live in total provision, that we lack nothing. God does not only know about our needs, but he wants to provide for us. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 to 11, listen to what it says. Which one of you, if your son asks you for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? How much more will your Father who is in heaven? You see, God is in heaven. Where is heaven? Where God is. The throne of God. And in the throne of God, in heaven are good things and God our Father wants to give us those good things. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So God wants us to live and experience total provision. God wants us to walk in provision. He wants to provide for us. And this morning we can allow God to provide for us Oh, we can keep worrying about life, worrying what we're going to wear, worrying about the day. And even though God says we cannot do anything to change it. Why? Because we, it's not within our power. And yet, He cares for us. So here is a nugget. God's will for your life is that you walk in total provision. And God wants to provide for you and for me. Hallelujah. I think that's good news. That's good news. The second thing that I want us to understand this morning is that God is able to provide for us. God does not just want to provide for us, but God is able. He has the ability to deliver. You know, it's one thing to reach out to somebody and ask for help when you know they do not have the power. And that's quite disappointing. It's a waste of time. Oftentimes, we go and ask for help from people that we know they have the ability. And God is telling us here that he has the ability to help us. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 18. He says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you would, be, you would abound in every good work. Hallelujah. And God is able to bless you abundantly. Hallelujah. So that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you would abound in every good work. God is able. God is able. God wants us to know that he does not just want. It's not just a desire. It's not just a passion that he has, but he has the ability to do it. Psalm 50 says, God owns a thousand cattle on the hill. The mines, the land, the grass, everything that exists in the world belongs to God. And so he has the ability to give us what we need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God does not just want to bless us, but God is able to provide for us. But watch number three. God provides for us at three dimension, okay? So we need to understand that there are dimensions to God's provision. And I know last week we looked at the dimensions to God's presence. But today I want us to look at the dimensions to God's provision because some of us understand that God provides for us and yet every day we are walking in luck because we do not understand that there are dimensions. So let me share with you the three dimensions to God's provision. The first one is what we call sustenance. Sustenance. This is where God sustains us. He sustains us because we are his creation. 
God provides for every person on the planet. Whether you believe in God or you don't, God is your provider. At what level? The level of sustenance. Matthew chapter 5 verses 44 to 45. Listen to what he says. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and unjust. What this verse is saying is that God provides and causes the sun to shine on the good and the evil, the just and the unjust. He causes rain to fall on the unjust and the just. In short, God provides for everyone. This is a level of sustenance. Whether we know God, whether we believe in him or not, because we are his creation, God will provide for us. Hallelujah. The Lord is our provider. Amen. Amen. The Lord is our provider. He says he will provide for us. This is the level of sustenance. But you see, this is where God provides for us to live, just to live, to survive in life. Okay. So this is one dimension of God's provision. And he says, I want to provide for you and I am able to provide for you. The second dimension to God's provision is called the miraculous. The miraculous. This is where God provides by performing a miracle. A good example is the story of Sarah and Abraham that we find in the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 21 verses 1 to 2. Listen to what the Bible says. The Lord kept his word and did for Sarah exactly what he promised. What is that? She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abraham. Now, up to this point, you might not see a miracle. But then it says, in his old age. You see, they were advanced in age. Meaning, they had passed that season in their life to have children. They had almost given up. But then God stepped in and helped them to have a child. This is what we call the miraculous. What is the miraculous? God's intervention in our affairs to cause things to happen. This is where God comes to do the impossible in our life. God will step into our life orchestrate events to work for our good. We call this the miraculous, God's sudden intervention. He will step in and cause things to work for us. He will step in and provide for us the miraculous. That's how God performs. This level is good. It, it is good. We need the miraculous in our life because there are times that we are needing God's intervention. Maybe that's where you are this morning. You have a situation in your life that you have been trying to solve and uh, you are struggling. Maybe you are needing a breakthrough in your health. Uh, you've been battling with sickness. Maybe you need a breakthrough in your finances. Maybe you need a breakthrough in your career, uh, in your relationship. God can step in and perform a miracle. God can intervene in that situation and cause things to work for your good. We call that the miraculous. God wants to provide for you. God wants to perform a miracle. And God is able to perform a miracle. God is able to cause things that are impossible to man to become possible. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's the God that we serve. This is the second dimension of God's provision to us, where he steps in to perform a miracle. The only little challenge with this is that to live under the miraculous, you always need a crisis. You always need a crisis in your life for God to step in and then perform a miracle because you need to have a situation that is impossible for you to solve. You need to get to the bottom of yourself. Then God steps in to restore you. So it's another dimension. But there is a third dimension that God is inviting us. This is the dimension that we call abundance. 
abundance. It is the dimension of open heaven, beloved. It is the dimension of open heaven. And this is what the Apostle Paul was trying to invite the church in Corinth to experience. And this is my prayer for you and for me, that God would tear open the heavens over our life and come down, that we live in total abundance. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 18, listen to what the Apostle Paul says. And God would generously provide all you need. God would generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need. And plenty left over to share with others. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So here's a question. Are your needs met today? And do you have enough to share with others? You know, it's always a blessing to have something that you can share with others. It's always a blessing to have something that you can share with others. When you are only living for yourself, you're not living at this level. You may be living at sustenance because at sustenance, it's where God provides for you and your needs are being met. You are surviving. At the miraculous, God intervenes in situation and causes things to happen. But that's occasional. It's not a lifestyle. Are we together? It's not a lifestyle. The miraculous is not a lifestyle. You can make it a lifestyle, but what it means is that you have a lifestyle of crisis upon crisis. Crisis after crisis in your life. So that a miracle can take place. But the level of abundance, beloved, listen to what the Apostle Paul, and God will generously, generously provide all you need. Which means, number one, at this level, your needs are being met. You have provision. Your needs are being met. Hallelujah. But secondly, watch what he says. You will always have everything that you need, not just immediately but even afterwards you will have enough for tomorrow and then he says plenty left over to share with others to share with your children to share with your family to share with others around you you become a blessing to others that's the level of abundance jesus said in john chapter 10 i have come that you may have life and have this life more abundantly you see, God wants to provide for us. God is able to provide for us and is inviting us to move from the level of sustenance to the level of the miraculous, from the level of the miraculous to the level of abundance. There's nothing wrong with sustenance. We all need that. There's nothing wrong with the miraculous. We all need that once in a while. But when you are at the level of abundance, beloved, it's a level where you are blessed. It's a level where your needs are met. So number one, God wants to provide for us. Number two, God is able to provide for us. And number three, we need to understand there are dimensions to God's provision. Sustenance, miraculous, and abundance. And finally, number four, supernatural provision is activated by systems, principles, and laws. This is very key. If we are going to experience open heaven and keep the doors open and keep heaven open over our life, we need to understand that God operates in system, principles, and laws. You see, I've often wondered why certain cultures and certain groups of people are prosperous. They live in abundance. They, are always, they always have enough to help others. You know, we all want that. But do we understand the secret behind that? You see, the secret is in the word of God. Because God explains it. Listen to what he says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 2. He says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on the earth. Will set you high above all nations. May that be your portion. Yes, may that be your portion. And then verse 2. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You need to catch this. 
supernatural provision working in abundance is activated by systems, principles, and laws. What are system? God is a God of order. God is a God of order. There are ways that God wants us to do life. When we align ourselves with the purposes of God, we align ourselves with the ways of God, we walk in abundance. God wants to provide for us. God is able to provide for us. God wants us to live in abundance, but he wants us to understand that there are systems to God's provision. And that's what we'll be going after this month of November and December. Understanding the systems, the principles. You know the word of God. The word of God is full of principles on how to do life, how to do relationship, how to do business, how to be prosperous. Uh, of, oftentimes when we run to God and ask him to meet a need, ask him to intervene, God often responds with an instruction. Our ability to catch that instruction and walk in it is what ushers us to the new level. Beloved, you need to hear this. Our ability to catch the instruction from God and receive it by faith and walk in it is what elevates us to the new level. So God is a God of principles and those principles are in the word of God, are in the word of God. A good example. Let me give you one example. The Bible says, whatever two or three agree upon touching on earth, it is done by our Father in heaven. The power of agreement. When there is disagreement within an organization, you cannot advance. But when you agree, God would cause the heavens to open over your life. You see, agreement is so powerful that even when you agree to do the wrong thing, you can see that working for you. That's not good, but that's the power of agreement. Remember the Tower of Babel. God looked at the people when they had decided to build a tower that would ascend. He said, well, because the people have agreed, nothing can stop them unless I, I step in. That's the power of agreement. So there are systems, there are principles, there are laws, the precepts. And according to the word of God, when we walk according to these precepts, we see prosperity. Here's another one. Bring all your tithe and your offering to the storehouse that there may be food. Most of us love a church that flows with abundance, a blessed church. But God gives us the secret to a blessed community of people is that every one of us contribute and sow a seed. I remember one of the former presidents of America who said, don't ask what America will do for you. Ask what you do for America. Do you know today there are so many people that are always asking, what happened? What didn't happen? Why isn't this not happening? Why didn't that work? Why didn't that work? But you're not thinking about what you can do to make it work. You're expecting others to make it work. You see, that's a mindset of working in poverty. That's not a mindset of abundance. A mindset of abundance assumes responsibility. Yeah, I know this is cutting to your heart. But that's how we work in abundance, beloved. We assume responsibility. We engage with the systems, the principles, and the laws of God, and we experience divine prosperity. So what am I talking about? Open heaven is an acquired state of being where we have access to God's provision. God wants to provide for us, and God is able to provide for us, but we must engage with the way God wants to do life the systems, the principles, and the laws. And you know what, beloved? We we'll experience the power of God. So I want you to lift your hands to the Lord and say, Oh God, tear open the heavens. I thank you for your sustenance upon my life. I thank you for the miraculous. Father, usher me to a life of abundance. 
pressed down, shaken together and running over. That every need in my life will be met. Today, Father, open the heavens over those that need healing. In the name of Jesus, open the heaven over those that need direction. Open the heavens over those that need the miraculous. And open the heavens over our lives that we might walk in abundance. Father, give us understanding of how you want us to do life. Give us understanding of the principles that we may walk in true understanding and have victory. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, open the heavens over us. Open the heaven. In the coming weeks, Father, we pray, download that which we need to know, that the truth might set us free and that we might walk in victory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. I just want to invite you. Uh, let's worship the Lord with our giving. And uh, there is a link that is posted on this chart. You can use it to give. And uh, you can also go, those of you that have uh, uh, Android or uh, uh, iPhones, go on the app and download Church Center and search for E3 Church. And uh, you'll be able to connect and give through that. And you would also be able to sign up for the ministries in the church for you to serve. And God bless you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. They say this mountain can be They say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way through We've heard the tide will never change they haven't seen what you can do There is power in your name So much power in your name Move the immovable 
said it, I believe it, you said it, it is done, you said it, I believe it, you said it, it is done, can you help me say yeah. it? a powerful experience we are so glad you joined us today hey if this is your first time we'd love to connect with you so please fill out a digital connect card you find the link in the comment and those who are meeting for the in-person we're meeting today at 4 p.m so see you there and everybody have a lovely sunday a beautiful week and see you again next week